Alrighty folks, and welcome back for some more Blood and Bones single player. It's been almost a week since I've recorded a single player episode. I've just been working on the multiplayer stuff and having kind of a fun week uh, off doing some other things, but time to get back to some single player Blood and Bones. The rain just stopped. The sun is coming up. I think it's coming up. Oh, it must be midday. Anyway, the rain just stopped. And I got a few different things going on. Uh, first of all, I went ahead and upgraded this old older pickaxe, and I put a Tartarite pickaxe head on it. And yeah, mining speed 14, 3,000 durability. So that's going to be uh, probably set that up as the Silk Touch pick. Uh, the other thing is I put the rest of my, well, not the rest of my uh, lapis on it, but I put the rest of the lapis required for Fortune 3 on this guy. So it takes 450, um, but with the nether lapis, you can smelt it into two lapis each. And then when you have Fortune 1 and Fortune 2, you get actually quite a bit. Oh, just turned night. It's not midday after all. Anyway, uh, with Fortune 1, Fortune 2, you get quite a bit of lapis out of that. So in addition to completing that, I think I still, yeah, I, I have almost two full stacks of lapis left. So uh, plenty of that and a Fortune 3 pick to get down there and start getting some diamonds and a few more emeralds, it looks like. Uh, so I went ahead and put together a stencil table and some stuff here. The other thing, I have been just using a plain old Jane, plain Jane vanilla bow uh, since the beginning of this series, and there's really no reason for that. So let's make a Tinker's Construct bow, and let's just look at the recipe real quickly. I honestly have not used these much. All right, so I need two um, tool rods and a bowstring. And I did a little bit of looking uh, to figure out what to do. And um, yeah, let's just start there and we'll come back to this. So we need a bowstring and we need a couple of, uh, well, tool rods. And I didn't bring the stuff over from Heidi Hole, so I have to make new ones, but that's okay. So. We're actually going to make the tool rods out of slime balls. Yes, slime is allowed for tool rod. Huh. Is there something goofy here? Let's let's grab some string and make sure I can make a bow string. I think it takes three string. Maybe it's just one? Let's find out. Yeah, string material cost is three. Material cost here is 0 0.5, and it does say slime is... Oh, maybe it means... Uh, yeah, okay, okay, I know what that is. I know what it is. You guys are like, but you should know this. All right, folks. Well, turns out I didn't know it. So um, I had to go look, look it up. I didn't actually even find it online. I found that if I went through my materials in U-Book, uh, in my tester world and I flip around till I get to different materials this is like way out here here we go uh, you take four slime balls I had heard four slime balls that's why I had four of them but didn't realize what to do with them you combine that with dirt and sand and you get slimy mud and then you cook the slimy mud and then you get a slime crystal and that should make the things we want so why are we doing this out of slime you could do these out of just regular old wood and you'd have basically the same as a normal bow. If you do it out of slime balls, um, it will be a little bit... Well, one place I, set, uh, I saw set a little bit faster, and one place I saw set a little bit slower. Uh, but they both agree that it's going to do more damage. So that sounds good. So, okay, what did it say? We do this, and this, and this. And then we get some slimy mud. And then we take that over here, and I'm actually cooking up some... Oh, good. It's uh, done with the cobblestone I fed it. I'm cooking up cobblestone because it's time to get ready for the 108 update. It's not here yet. I don't know when it's going to be here. There's still a lot, of, a lot of things being worked, I know. But I know in 108, cobblestone gets attacked. And if it's a zombie or a skeleton, they'll just walk up to it and break the cobblestone, which is bad because, you know, they'll get into the farm. If it's a creeper, 
Creeper doesn't have any arms. So Creeper, um, you know, he does what he does best. He he wants to break it and, and he goes for it. And kaboom. Okay, now that I have Slime Crystal, there we go. Okay, so Tool Rod, Slime Crystal, we'll do a Slime Tool Rod, and then it's a half cost, so we get this little bitty shard. That gives us our other one. And, um, you know, I I forgot to look this up. I was going to check it off off uh, off camera, but can we make other bowstrings? Ooh. We can make a fiery bowstring. I uh, bet you that's the Natura string. So this is drawstring one, durability one, arrow speed one. This is higher durability, higher arrow speed, and faster draw. Okay, I'm all about that. Do I have some? Do I not? I don't have any? This is my nether stuff. Hmm. I kind of feel like I want to go to the nether and get get a couple of those. It, it should j well, I, let's look up on the recipe. No, it doesn't even have a recipe. Uh, but if I look at the bowstring, valid material is string. Well, you know what? Uh, let me go hit the nether real quick and let's try that because the spiders there drop... Um, what is it called? It's called flame string. And this has got to be what it's made out of, right? Sure, it's got to be. I can't believe I don't have any here. I'll check the chest and stuff too, but let me pop offline. I'll go play in the nether for a few minutes, and uh, maybe once I get there, I'll... Ooh, Etten. Uh, maybe once I get there and find some spiders, if I can find some spiders. Like I said, it's been a week or something. I'll have to go see how the whole nether thing was in this particular game. <laughs> Uh, once I find something, I will go ahead and uh, pop the recording back in. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, folks. I remembered where the portal was. <clears throat> Might have taken me a second, thinking it was down the other side. Uh, any rate, here we go through, and I brought something I want to try and see if this is going to work. Now, nor you know, you guys know water doesn't work in the Nether. If you try to pour water out in the Nether, it doesn't work. What about milk? Oh. Well, about the same as water, but it does disappear. All right. So I broke the portal so that it won't be spawning bad stuff uh, while we're out and about. But milk didn't quite work. So we'll just throw the old bucket in here. And apparently there's string in here for some reason. But all right, whatever. Um, you always make sure you have flint and steel to relight that though because if you put it out and you have no way to relight it, yeah, you're kind of stuck. And I remembered where this is and I remembered why I didn't have any um, <laughs> pickaxes in my pack. Um, remember why I don't have any string is because I went straight up. But I think that there's a couple places I can go up there and there's some land where I may be able to find some spiders. So let me go take a look and hopefully I'll be back in a moment with some spiders. Alrighty folks, we're back and um, yeah, another bad. Uh, I didn't find any of the, what are the heat scar spiders. All I found was the, I don't even know which mod puts it in, the hardcore no, it's not hardcore ender. I'm not sure which one it is. All the doom characters, the the Belfs and the uh, Cacodemons and the Flying Skulls kept flying at me and exploding at me. You know, and honestly, everything was fine, right? Until the end, I was trying to leave and two Belfs showed up. And they have the same uh, Ramabra. I guess there isn't one out here right now. The same problem the Ramabras do. They just rapid fire at you just over and over and over. And each one knocks you back a little bit. So I'm sitting here with my Tartarite sword trying to get to them and they're just knocking me all over the place and I'm not getting there. Any rate, uh, yeah, so we're going to make that bow out of just regular old string for now and maybe later I can get back to the nether and try to get some flame string again and make a new one. Won't hurt to have two bows. Uh, I did pick up a bunch of random stuff, some, some, you know, it's probably down here, nether redstone, some nether adamantium, some tin, and a couple more blocks of nether lapis, but my chest is completely full. So, 
I thought I would do a little chest upgrade on camera because I don't actually know if I've done this this series or not. We have uh, metallurgy chests here and uh, you can go from a regular one to brass and then to silver, gold, electrum, and platinum. Now a regular one by one chest is just is going to give you 3 by 9 storage. So this doubles it. Brass gives you 6 by 9. That's great. Silver then gives you two more rows, so it doesn't double it again, but it, uh, or it doesn't add another 3 by 9, which is basically what this does. This one adds another two rows of 9, and then gold adds one row of 9, and electrum adds one row of 9, and then if you go all the way to platinum, you can actually add two rows of 9 again. So you get a huge up to upgrade from a regular chest to brass, and you get a pretty good one from brass to silver, and then until you get all the way to platinum, it's uh, just a single row of, of nine slots. So I'm going to go to silver. Um, you know, if you've got plenty of materials, although yeah, I guess I've got plenty of materials. But anyway, um, depends on you know how much material you want to throw into it. But this is going to be just fine for now. So what I am going to do, let's pretend this is a barrel. Nah, let me uh, let me move this guy over. I'm going to put this silver chest right here. Okay, and with that I'm just going to put all the processed ingots in there and that will give me plenty of room for more nether stuff. And still have a decent amount of sorting in this. Now the other problem is the one below it is also just about full. I thought I would put the lapis and the redstone in here as well. And that should stem the tide of uh, storage problems for the moment. I would normally like to start working on an applied energistic system at this point, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, here's the problem. So for an AE system you need an ME controller which means you need Fluix crystals as well as an advanced processor. Fluix crystals takes Fluix dust. Fluix dust takes Dragon Essence from the Hardcore Ender expansion. So yeah, AE is uh, post post end. You gotta go kill the dragon or I didn't even know what's there in the, uh, the Hardcore expansion but uh, you gotta go there and do all the things first before you can make an AE system. So we're just dealing with chests for now. Okay, let's put our slime tool rods in here and our bowstring, and this will get us a green, lovely green short bow. So the draw, okay, yeah, the draw speed is 1.2. So with wooden um, tool rods, your draw speed is one second, I think, 1.0. So that's actually a little bit faster, but this makes the arrows shoot faster, so they're, the, it'll travel to your target faster. And the slime has a much higher durability, so this is going to last a lot longer than a regular old wooden bow. Now it says it only attacks for one heart, but that's the base. And uh, the longer you, the further you hold it, or longer you hold it, the further you pull it back, the more damage it's going to do. And it does use. See how? Well, that is pretty fast. That's definitely faster than a regular one, right? Let's just try. It feels like it is. Maybe I'm just making it up. Eh, feels like it's a little faster. And we should be able to gather these guys back up. Now these are just vanilla arrows. We can make our own arrows, but I... I, I don't know if it matters, but you know what? Let's just try. Let's, let's make a little bit, because I want to see if it makes much difference or not. Um, I've got two or three stacks of arrows down here because of the uh, skeletons that keep dying in there. So if I can use vanilla arrows, that's just a super easy way for me to do that. But what the heck, we're we're doing some of these things. Let's make uh, an arrowhead pattern, and I'm going to need a fletching. Is that a fletching? Yeah, that's a fletching. So I looked up arrow, and there are a million ways to make an arrow with um, this pack. So basically, let's just take a look at a couple of them real quickly here. You can make, um, this is your flint arrow with feathers and wooden tool rod. So that's pretty close to a normal old um, vanilla Minecraft arrow. 
And if you look with shift, that's going to do a short bow attack of two and a half to five hearts. So if you hold it down uh, for the full length, you're going to get that double damage on it, and you're going to get that five hearts. Also, the weight is pretty low, and the accuracy is pretty high. If you go to, let's say, like an iron arrow, here we go. Now this is going to do three hearts, and if you hold it down for the full duration, you'll get the doubling, and you'll get six hearts. But the weight's eight and a half, eight point seven, and that means it's going to fall much faster. It's not going to go nearly as far. So, like I said, there's a thousand different ways to make darts uh, or arrows here. I, where I don't even know where it was. I had a tartarite one. There it goes. Tartarite one does four and a half hearts, but it weighs thirty. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to like actually shoot that anywhere. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's make. Just for just for fun, I'm gonna make like something that's very similar to this. Let's put in the old uh, flint. And we'll get some flint arrowheads, and we got sticks for tool rods. You don't actually have to make that. And I grabbed some. Well, I don't want that many. Grabbed uh, the stack of feathers out of the chest down there, and we get some fletching. So, if we do all this in the tool forge or tool station if you only have a tool station handy uh, let's do that that and that and there we go there's our tinkers construct arrows oh and each one makes four so that's good so that's 16 well that's not as hard to make as i thought now i don't really know which one it's going to use let me just toss those on the floor for a second here and let's see how this one goes Oh, oh wow! They got kind of stuck in the micro block, or it's really, really thin, or something there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, those work. Maybe, maybe there's a better arrow to make, but uh, yeah, I'll experiment with these two a little bit, play them back and forth, see what, see if it's worth making some more arrows or just uh, going with this stuff. Okay, let's see. Yes, time to eat and get some more hearts back. That's good. Um, oh, I was going to try bone meal. So another one I noticed was bone arrows look pretty good. So that does the same damage as the flint one. And its weight is actually lower. So instead of uh, 1.27, this is 0.88. And if you look at that, it's the bone tool rod and the bone arrowhead, or no, the tool rod is the same, it's 0.69, the arrowhead is much lighter. So that might even be better than a flint arrowhead, I'm thinking. Uh, it would make your arrows fly faster and have less, ha uh, gravity would have less effect on them. Okay, so, made it back from the nether mostly in one piece. Um, got the short bow made. Ah, yes, next. All right, 108 preparation. If I left this as it is and I went to 108, the entire farm would just get exploded and overrun and we would have lots and lots of problems. Uh, so basically the mobs, the mobs are mad about anything you silly humans do to their world. I'm just going to dump all those in here for the moment because I don't want to bother to sort it. Uh, let's do that and that, sure. I'll sort it off camera later. So they like their world the way it was, and they don't want me around doing stuff. So torches, are, you know, they're mad about them because that makes light, and they don't like light. Uh, cobblestone, they don't like, I guess, just because it's ugly, I don't know. Um, it turns out they don't mind stone brick. I'm going to say that's because, you know, stone brick was uh, found in some jungle temples or something. Oh, I forgot to replace that. But basically all this cobble's got to go. Cobble slabs have got to go. Cobble stairs have got to go. Um, the cobble I've got over there, i got to replace all that with, with stone or stone brick. You know, they don't mind dirt, they don't mind grass, so you could do some things with just dirt or grass, but, huh, this guy is never going to grow. I guess he's too close to that. Anyway, um, oh yeah, here's the thing. So this is a rubber sapling, and you can see it in Whaler right now. If I break it, it's actually going to say, 
Oh, they fixed it. Used to say sacred rubber sapling, and it was something to do with the fact that it had been planted for a certain amount of time. So anyway, um, looks like that's been fixed. So that's cool. Anyway, I need to go through and I need to replace all this cobblestone with stone or stone brick, and you know, stone brick is nicer than stone, so I'm going to do that all the way around. So I'm definitely not going to leave recording on for this whole time, um, but just to let you know what's up. So I'm going to go do that, and then I'll check the time. Uh, let's see. I'm going to say that's pretty close to an episode. I'll see if I can find like maybe one more little thing to add on the end here. Maybe once I get all the cobblestone replaced, I'll uh, pop back in and show you the upgraded farm and how it looks. Something along those lines. Oh, and by the way, the uh, aggressive livestock that gang up and try to kill you, uh, it's here to stay. It's still in 108 and it's not going away. So if you want to have some farms and some livestock, you're going to need to find yourself a way to... Uh, Put you your cows or whatever either away from the rest or such that you can kill them in one hit so that the rest of them don't try to kill you all right that's it for the moment i'll be back once i've made some more progress we'll see you then all righty folks and back after i can't even think of how many stacks of stone brick um, as you can see i decided to put stone brick around the outer uh well around the outside and leave the cobblestone up. I didn't figure there was really... well, I went and did some testing to find out if there was really a reason to break the cobblestone or not, and as far as I can tell there is not. Um, I'm also just getting a little bit of uh, bread cooked up here because I've been living on melon smoothies for a while and I'm about out of melons at the moment. Yep, I got eight left. Eight left is all. <clears throat> Pardon me, but I had an interesting thing to tell you about, and I ended up with a bunch of steak. Uh, happens while I was do working on the uh, farm. So, bam, 16. Well, if I had room, um, I figured I'd put a few of them in here. 16 foot long, not hot dogs. Although I still think it's funny if we call them hot dogs. So, 16 hot dogs, foot longs. Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, so everybody had always told me that, not everybody, people had told me that mobs would climb ladders. And I've had ladders right over here on this side of the wall since I don't know how many episodes ago. Never seen a mob climb the ladder once. Well, I went and did all this, moved all the stuff around. I hadn't put the brick on yet, but uh, the ladders were still there. And suddenly, a creeper climbed the ladder, I think. At any rate, somehow I ended up with my my fences got exploded. There was fire on the ground. The cows all burned. Well, not all of them, but like half the cows burned. And when I came over here to try to fix it, skeletons were climbing the ladder and coming over the um, coming over the wall. So it might have been lightning because it was raining uh, originally that set everything on fire. I don't know. I didn't see a creeper. I didn't see any creeper damage other than some of the fences were exploded. So I don't know. any rate, that was all quite weird and I will now say I have seen um, mobs climb the ladders. So last thing I wanted to do today is take a look at the sugar cane. Now remember an episode or two ago, I can't remember exactly when, I broke all this and replanted it. Keep an eye on that coal bolt over there. Tricky little guys. I broke all this and replanted it all, and it's looking about the same to me. There's one piece of sand that's not grown to too high. There's two pieces of dirt, but whoops. I think one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Well, that's hard to count. I think there's just a little bit more on the sand anyway. If it is faster, it's very, very, very small bit faster. It's not two or three times faster like people have been saying. And the last thing I wanted to try is, remember I, oh, squid. Did we get past? Ah, come on, drive. Wow, I forgot how to drive a boat apparently. What is that? Oh, meteor. Okay, um, 
Yeah, remember I planted this sugar cane in the jungle down here a long time ago because they're supposed to grow better in the jungle. The last few times I've checked on it, it had not grown at all. And I wanted to just come down and check it out. Okay, well, apparently it does grow. So I was starting to wonder if there was something weird with the loaded chunks. Because remember, it's loading a lot of chunks now, uh, where it didn't in earlier versions of the pack and in normal, normal vanilla. Um, but now, yeah, it's loading a huge amount of chunks. Like all, all this green all over the place for whatever reason. Normally you just have a little square of, is it 8 by 8 or something like that? So I didn't know if these were really loaded quite right or not, but anyway, so yeah, here's some, some more uh, sugar cane down here, and I guess I will have to keep an eye on it because it does appear to be growing properly. So let me just finish planting this out, and I think that's going to be it for an episode, folks. I'm going to head on back to the house and uh, probably actually go get ready for our next multiplayer episode. I hope you guys are enjoying those. I will keep doing single players, but, um, you know, I'm having a good time doing multiplayer. And I, like I said, I hope you guys are enjoying watching them too. So we'll have a little single player, a little multiplayer. Uh, Magic Farm, guys, I know a few of you guys are still wondering what's happening with Magic Farm. I'm not ready to say it's completely dead, but um, I feel like I need to make some more progress in Blood and Bones before the 108 or maybe you know 1.1 or whatever the next patch is coming out so I'm really enjoying blood and bones right now and I'm really liking um, the difficulty and all the time and effort AMS has put into this to make it not only difficult but you know just a tight mod pack right there aren't loopholes in it like um, a normal mod pack is oh just a hint take your boats with you because the mobs will just break them on you all right, this is all microblocks. Well, it may be that mobs will grief uh, microblocks in 108. I don't know for sure. It looks like they're kind of supposed to, but maybe it doesn't quite work. We'll see. But then again, 108 is still in development and uh, being changed, so... We'll see. At any rate, include in, in addition to the cobblestone, and I still got cobble here, and I got cobble stairs back there. Uh, we may need to replace all the micro blocks that are down at mob level. You know, anything like three or four, probably four and higher, should be okay. But things that are down at the level where mobs can get to them, that may be a problem uh, once 108 hits. So we'll do a little more prep work. We'll get ready for 108 and. Uh, Boy, I want to get back to the roguelike dungeon. I want to get to the deep dark. I want to get to the end. A lot of stuff I still want to get done here. So um, lots of things to do, and we'll, we'll get to them next episode. Hope you enjoyed, and hope to see you next time. We'll catch you then.